one's in the living room like a statue overtaken by a brown shag car. I love telling stories that are relevant to communities uh, and preferably the communities that the operas are being performed in. Um, and Philomena and Farmer and Dog both happen to take place in Alberta and I think this is a lovely thing. I love it when we tell our stories, our own stories, on opera stage, on a musical theater stage and a regular standard stage. It's, it's just a lovely thing. Our stories are important and they merit uh, the grandeur of voice and acting and costumes. Um, I think it's a, it's a lovely thing. So Farmer and Dog with John Astacio uh, is a, a piece about a depressed farmer. And um, I have been really interested in um, the depression of farmers in general because it's become some sort of a, a prevalent uh, issue, uh, especially seasonal depression where farmers are, are very active during the summer and then they have these winters off where it's fallow and... Um, and then I wanted to take it one step further and create a portrait of a farmer who is gay and who is closeted um, and living in a community that is sort of hostile to, to that lifestyle um, and to that sexual orientation. And um, just the, the loneliness when you can't identify other people of that community in, in which to, to be in dialogue with, um, let alone date. And so uh, John was really excited about uh, the place of pets in our lives and how they contribute to our mental health. And I think that uh, during COVID lockdown, um, I think that a lot of people have relied on, on their pets to, to really help them through the tumultuous uh, couple of years that we've had. When Royce and I first had our uh, discussion, our initial discussions, he asked me what, you know, how I was doing and what I was thinking about. And I told him, I said, um, you know, there's some, there's a, a, some challenges during the pandemic, and one of them was just sort of dealing with your, with your own sanity <laughs> and trying to figure out what was going to happen and what was relevant and was I still relevant and what was important and what wasn't important. All these sorts of things. I mean, there, there was a lot of struggles and there was a lot of dark days. And, and one, the one thing that I noticed that helped me get through those days uh, was my dog. And uh, a lot of people talked about their pets. And um, whether it's a dog or a cat or a, a ferret or a bird or whatever it was, uh, it helped a lot of people get through some of those dark days during the pandemic. I really like this piece because I have a very strong connection to my cat. She knows my secrets. She knows how to support me and be with me and even just lean on my leg and that's enough to to show me that she's there. This piece is, is unique in the sense that we're all kind of going through this situation of, uh, during the pandemic especially, where mental health is just so prominent. Um, and uh, it hits pretty hard in the sense that we all deal with our own inner turmoils, especially when we're alone for uh, an extended period of time. And um, um, I just think that it, it it hits home with how we are today. I, I told uh, Royce about this. I said it would be, it'd be kind of interesting not to tell a COVID story, but to tell a story about a person who, whether they knew it or not, relied on their pet dog or their pet cat to help them uh, get through some dark days. And I think we all do this, whether we admit it or not, all of us who have um, uh, furry friends in our lives. Uh, but it certainly did help me. Um, and so I, I said this to Royce, and, and Royce said, well, you know, that's interesting. I was thinking about a story about a farmer um, who was struggling with his sexual identity. And I said, oh, that's interesting. And then Royce went off and he figured out a way to, to combine those two stories into one about a farmer and his dog. When I read the, the libretto and when I um, really listened to, to John's music, um, I didn't come with a, a kind of a, a preconceived notion of how um, I should be emoting uh, during this piece because it could, there was many, many angles that it could be taken from. It could be taken from an oh, woe is me, sorrow situation, or it could have been taken from a very angry uh, 
uh, notion or even in some situations very sensual uh, um, and so it, it really was listening to uh, John's guidance that uh, kind of brought forward what what is um, however the um, being able to correlate it to kind of like you know time during the summer at the farm and watching my uncle um, be on out in the fields for hours and hours on end and actually hearing of, uh, of stories of other colleagues also as well that it's like their their uh, their father would purposefully ask them to bring lunch out to the combine to break up the day so that you break up those thoughts and break up those emotions and stuff and so just kind of thinking about how isolated that is is essentially the way we had to um, that I that I really had to think about it well I think we're opera I think art whether it's opera or film or stage plays or musicals uh, really need to reflect what's going on now um, it's lovely that we do La Boheme and Carmen and Traviata and all these wonderful stories. Those are timeless stories and we will continue to tell those stories. They were important in the 1900s and the 1800s and 1700s when they were written and in many ways they're still important today. However, there are stories about today that need to be told as well. And uh, whether it's uh, a, a queer story or a BIPOC story, um, these are all stories that are worthy of being told on the opera stage, and it's something that I feel behooves, or, uh, that artists are behooved to do. I think aloneness is a very complicated issue. For someone who's going through some sort of challenge in their life, sometimes talking to a person isn't really the right solution, and I think being able to communicate even non-verbally with your animal is it can bring you what you need. So I think it's a beautiful piece that I hope resonates. You can't maybe tell that I'm the dog, but I think the idea is that there's someone there listening, supporting.